All right. Once again, 911 deep dive. Let's see if I can control this tongue of mine uh, <laughs> with Adam Fitzgerald. <laughs> we're, we're one year in and we're already falling apart. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it may, you'd start digging in, you start digging into this shit, man, and it's like, like parts of your body start rotting that you didn't know existed. <laughs> um, um, it's like, uh, you know, a Ben Adam peel. Like for me, it's my brain. It's like I'm starting to see like spotty memory and, you know, misremembering of names. And I'm 53. I just turned 53. My birthday was uh, December 27th. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't wait for dementia. You know, I just, this is going to be great. And I'm going to probably mix up Osama bin Laden with Mike Schmidt of the Phillies. And just uh, become a mess completely. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's horrible, man. I know. <laughs> it, 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 we don't deserve this cruel punishment, do we? Right. Absolutely. Um, not, how come this doesn't happen to Alex Jones? I don't know. Well, no, because he gets sued for two trillion dollars that's why <laughs> i know it's an ungodly amount even though i have no like compassion for him because i can't stand it but i mean that that's an absurd amount but i i found out in that trial tommy that um uh it was uh alleged that he made about 78 million dollars a year and i said wow he makes that much money I, I, it's a it's a it's appalling how many people listen to him because um one thing i noticed mm. um regarding uh alex jones is that over the, the last 25 years is that um you know he's been telling people he's fighting a deep state meanwhile he you know like a broken clock he's right twice a day but most of the time he gives off disinformation and well, what I, you know my problem with people like alex jones is that it's not he's not like physically hurting people right but what he does is just as bad is he creates generations of people because he has such a wide range of people that listen to him. I mean, all walks of life, all ages. And what this yeah. does is that he creates generations of misinformed people. And they repeat these narratives that actually assist the state in regards to certain conspiracies that are true, but you won't know it because he spreads false ones. So I don't I don't doubt that Alex Jones is a Fed. What I what I do doubt is that he makes 78 million dollars a year i would venture to say they have conflated the value of the market of of his company and his earnings that's what i would say that that's kind of the way i would read that because i heard the same thing and i was like i don't think he makes that much a year i think that's what his company's worth at the end of every year and so they're saying oh well that's your net net worth that's your value every year is 78 million so we can put it on you that you earn 78 million you know what i'm saying yeah i, I look i don't i don't know his net worth um it's estimated that you know he's you know makes 70 million a year i couldn't tell you i mean that's coming from the the prosecution so uh I guess they're meticulous in what they have to do, or what they work. Did they inflate? I, you know, I couldn't tell you. I'm not very, very good. I just think that I just think they, they like, I think what they do is they misconstrue intentionally misconstrue these, like these analysis and, and say things in such a way that it makes the defense look bad. And I'm not willing to just take their word for it. You always be critical of all sides. Yeah. Because in yeah. the middle is the truth, actually. Right. Right. So, so so I would I would I would venture to guess that the company year after year is worth seventy eight million dollars. But I would I have a hard time believing that he put that much cash in his pocket every year. Yeah, I'm I'm s i am i am was stunned when I heard it. Like I I said, There's no way this guy makes seven. There's no way. Right, right. I can't believe it. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, he does. I mean, he does sell like these vitamins or whatnot online. But God, seventy million dollars worth. I mean, <laughs> how, much, how much does bodybuilding.com make? You know? <laughs> I could. Uh, yeah, I, I find that I find it hard to believe. Actually. Yeah, I do. I, I just I don't know if I can necessarily believe that. I can believe that the net worth of his company 
at the end of every year would be around 78 million. But I, I have a hard time believing he puts that money like he in himself his pocket. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. So we're uh we want to talk about um the Patriot Act tonight. So this is gonna it's gonna be fun. Yeah, and, you know, it's it's an important it's like the best bill that Congress ever passed, man. <laughs> yeah. It's done You're such right. so much good for the American people. God, if you're in an authoritarian, sure. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, like I told you before, before we started recording, I'm I'm currently uploading the Patriot Act to my WordPress because I think people really need to read it in sections. Like mm-hmm. I'm uploading it in sections by pages, so it's easier to read. I mean, it's a it's a long bill, and actually, it's been reformatted multiple times. Um, so. It is actually after like the attacks of September 11th. Um, it was like on October, I think like 20th, some that week of the 20th or the 20th. Can we uh, can we can we back up just a little bit? Because if sure. I were if I if I understand correctly, you would probably know more about this than I do. But if I understand correctly, the Patriot Act was written in the ni- like early 90s, late 80s. Is that correct? Uh, that is not new to me. Uh, I'd never heard of that one before. Okay. From what I understand, it was, uh, Biden was actually a co-author of the Patriot Act in the early, early nineties or late eighties. And it was something that they had been trying to push on Congress long before the attacks on nine 11. Interesting. I'm not. I'm not sure, but I'm not, like I'm not really familiar with that. Okay. Um, I'm not. I can't comment on that. Was it the Omnibus Counterterrorism Act of 1995? I don't think so. I think it was written in like 91, 90, 91. But then part of me wants to say 89, but it was something that, if I remember correctly. Biden took responsibility for writing it. Yeah, that, well, uh, I mean, The Intercept actually wrote an article um, in just, was it uh, two or three years ago about um, the Patriot Act. It was written by Jeremy Scahill, by the way. It was a great uh, reporter in his own right. And according to when, uh, on the attacks, they were talking about um, how Biden helped to arc, uh, you know, become the primary architect of the of the Patriot Act himself, mm. along with the uh, Defense Department. Now, but as for like implementing the Patriot Act before September 11, two thousand one, that's news to me. Yeah, um, from what I understand, they tried to push it into Congress for a vote, and it was rejected. Oh, it may be a, oh okay. I understand. I, I understand. And like I said before, my momentary lapse of reason is kicking in. Uh, it was actually a proposal. Okay. And it didn't get passed. So, okay, I understand you now. So, yeah, yeah it was actually a proposal in the, in the uh, like, was it, night? you say 91? I, I From what I remember, it was like somewhere between 89 and 91 for those dates, for some reason, are like ingrained in my head. I could be wrong. No, you know what? This may sound actually familiar because bills actually could be proposed, but they could be po- they could be held on pause or held in uh, a state of suspension. And then what happened was on I think that week in October I was talking about it was actually Jim uh, Jim Sensenbrenner um, who introduced uh, HR uh, three zero one six two, which in- incorporated provisions from the sponsored House bill of the what was now known as the patriot act mm. and on the i think it was the following day or the day after that the the patriot act it was actually uh passed overwhelmingly in the house by a vote of 357 to like i think like 60 or 62 yeah votes. yeah and it was like and and by the way you would think the republicans are the majority in there it was actually the democrats so that just goes to show you in this regards when it comes to dividing power lines there isn't really much of a duopoly, I guess, when it comes yeah. to politics, when it comes to the greater, bigger issues. 
that's when you know that there's only one monopoly in power. Yeah, like it's like um, any anytime you hear the word bipartisanship, you I should cringe. <laughs> yeah, you should just cringe. You're like they're about to pass the worst thing we've ever heard. If they both agree, it's got to be bad. You know, I just spoke with Kyle Metovic yesterday on his podcast. It was an awesome conversation. We, it was like two hours long. We talked about the, the Kyle is party. such a horrible human being. I, 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 Kyle is a terrible human being. And I'm <laughs> saying that because I know he's listening to this right now and hearing me say that Kyle is a terrible human being. <laughs> and meanwhile, he sung your praises. Me, <laughs> I love Kyle, man. He's such a good dude. That guy is phenomenal. That's the most uh, broad topic conversation I've ever had with anybody. It was fantastic. We didn't talk about 9-11 once. It was great. Um, he's a great guy. That was fantastic. It was a great uh, podcast. But anyway. Yeah, uh, I love, about- no, Kyle's a really good dude. Yeah, he's, he's a great. really smart kid. He just got married. He's yeah. I mean, yeah. he's really like taking on adulting like a champ, man. Because I fought it with tooth and nail my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> he um he's wise behind his years. It's very he, deceiving. He he's is. young too. He's like yeah. 27, 28. He actually, I think he just turned twenty nine. He just turned twenty nine. Yeah. His birthday was in December. Yeah, ju- it was just before he got married. I want to say it was in November. Oh wow! All right. Yeah, he he got married. I want to say a week after his birthday. So, yeah, it, it, we've talked about like you know this transparent uh, duopoly in politics, and I you know I said you know it's funny is that there's only a left and right when it comes to domestic issues healthcare, education, social security, right? That keeps the people divided. But when it comes to like war or the military industrial complex needing funding, yeah. there isn't no left and right. There's just right. one yeah. You know, yeah. Just, just, yeah, yeah, we'll sign off on this, you know? Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the NDAA every year. Every year. It's you know, <laughs> how much you need, you know, how much. I remember when they used to um they used to only pass that on Christmas Eve so nobody knew what was going on. Now they're just blatant with it. Yeah, they're blatant now. They don't even care. Yeah. They're just they like, don't even care. We don't even care if you don't like it. Like, it's getting passed in your face, bitches. Yeah, I mean, I think at this point, Tommy, not to go off topic here, but I think if if a, I, I can't wait for the day when I see a politician just come on air and basically say, you know, I really don't care what my constituents think. We're going to do whatever we want. <laughs> there was, um, it actually, it was very similar to that, that, um, uh, Judge Napolitano ha- was having a conversation with uh, a politician and and he said like aren't you concerned that the bill you are about to pass is unconstitutional and the politician said oh yeah we don't worry about that we pass it and we let the courts decide <laughs> fantastic yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> this is the problem that we're facing with and this is what happened with the Patriot Act like an overwhelming vote and then um, right after that, yeah, Bush signed the Patriot Act into law. Right. And I think that was in late October, like the final week of October. That's all it took. And then um, right away, you had a wide a range of uh, critics, especially from the independent circles. They saw the danger right away. And they said that, you know, one of the critics of the Patriot Act was its provision for, for indefinite detention and um, of immigrants. And yeah, and there were there were some people really like that were kind of like um on the front lines of that, like Glenn Greenwald. I mean, you know, yes. I mean yeah. he he was he never bought into it. Right. And you know, unfortunately at that time in my youth, I wasn't I was in my twenties at that moment when that right. was going on. I just kind of bought into it. I was just kind of like, yeah, like whatever. And we were kind of told anybody that questions the the purpose of the government and the government power is anti-patriotic they're just not a patriot and i had just gotten out of the military i was in my in my young 20s um and i was like yeah stop being unpatriotic i remember there was um a woman out of she was from South Texas. Hmm. 
she was running for governor. I can't remember her name. I want to say her last name was Sotomayor, but I could be getting that confused with the Maria Sotomayor. Might have been, but she was she was what they were calling at that Sonia. time Sonia Sotomayor. It could be. Anyway, she was running for governor of Texas, and she was questioning everything. She was like, "I don't know if I believe the narrative. I don't believe all all this around nine eleven, right. like." And, um, I mean, she got hammered. Everybody, Glenn Beck, Sean Hannity, they all went after her, Hmm. you know? And she was a conservative, um, Hispanic woman from the Valley and, uh, was running for governor of Texas. And she just got destroyed in the media. Probably labeled a traitor or rhino. Um, I'm not surprised. I, re- because- I remember, I remember talking to a friend of mine around that time and saying, man, I really like this chick until she started asking all these questions about nine yeah. 11 and here I am, you know, 15 years later going, wait, what the hell? <laughs> she was right. <laughs> yeah. 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 She was right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the big, you know, some of the biggest crooks, as you say, one of them was Glenn Greenwald. The other one was, um, of course, uh, uh, Jeremy Scale. Another one was Jesslyn Radak, who was uh, actually an American national security and human rights attorney who defended Thomas Drake against the NSA. And what happened was um, when the uh, bill was passed, one of the provisions was the indefinite detention of immigrants and permission to even use domestic law enforcement to search uh, like a house or a business without the owner's uh, consent or knowledge about the you know circumstances right. and actually it also expanded the use of the national security letter <clears> which <throat> allowed for like you know the fbi the uh the dia the nsa to search um telephone email financial records without a court order without a warrant and this expanded across all access of of the state and federal law enforcement agencies. So in other words, there's no wall anymore. Hmm. So all of these agencies are now working in conjunction with one another. And this was really the horrifying aspect of the Patriot Act. And many of those provisions were actually were set to expire like four years later in, in 2005 at the end of the year. But approximately like three or four years after its enactment, in the months preceding the, uh, the the date of its finality, supporters of that Patriot Act, including Joe Biden, by the way, we mentioned it before, pushed to make those perversion, uh, provisions permanent mm. with no expiration date. Um, and then the critics uh, of that uh, sought to revise various, uh, various sections of the civil liberties protections and tried to reverse that order and in July of 2005, um, the, U- the, the, um, the U.S. Senate passed a reauthorization bill with substantial changes to several of the act sections and the, the, House, um, the House bill, uh, the, 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 um, the reauthorization bill kept most of the act's uh, original language. In other words, um, you know, yeah, we'll modify the bill, but the strongest parts of the bill are going to remain unchanged. And so you had two bills that were reconciled in a conference committee criticized by, you know, senators from both parties who were against the provisions anyway. And um, what happened was the bill was actually removed. Uh, the bill removed much of the changes from the Senate version and then passed on Congress about like a year later in 2006 and it was signed by you know none other than our famous president George W. Bush uh, in March of that year, and so you know fast forward six years later, you know here comes Mr. Hope and Change and Obama, who actually was exponentially worse when it came to the Patriot Act, which by the way was now signed as the um, Patriot Sunset and Ex- Patriot Sunset Extensions Act of 2011. 
which was actually now a four-year extension of the key provisions of the act. And they included the following. This is really absurd. And this, this caused some people in the Bush administration to say, wow, we would have never gotten away with that. And that's yeah. roving wiretaps around the world. Even if the, the, the person is an American or a foreign national, right? If they go around the world, the United States can actually use wiretaps that exceeded the borders of the United States. Right. Two, searches of business records without a warrant. Three, conducting surveillance of so-called lone wolves who are supposed to be labeled by the Justice Department, but because of a certain bill that was written by Bush in November, which November of 2001, which was labeled the authorization for use of military force in 2001, which had a provision about expanding surveillance to Americans <laughs> where they could conduct and label lone wolves under the president. So this was a big issue, Tommy, in 2001, in November of 2001. The attorney general, John Ashcroft, was in the hospital and he was undergoing surgery. And he had no idea what was happening. So you have these White House lawyers like Richard Attenborough and John Yu and Alberto Gonzalez trying to rewrite this memorandum. And meanwhile, Ashcroft's lawyers got there first saying, hey, you can't let these guys make amends about um, this provision that they're making with this memorandum. And meanwhile, there was a huge argument. Meanwhile, all these security people, you know, Secret Service, are rushing to the hospital and they're rushing at the the side of Ashcroft, who at this point is ashen. He looks like, you know, he's about to expire. And all these lawyers are yelling at him. And the Secret Service is right there screaming. And um, uh, James Risen's State of War book, uh, you know, takes note of what was happening. And, and also in Richard Clark's Against All Enemies, they wrote about this obscene, like, scenario in this hospital in, in Washington, D.C., where they're arguing back and forth. And meanwhile... You know, Ashcroft's lawyers basically uh, got rid of Lighthouse Legal, but that didn't stop them because what happened was Condoleezza Rice, the National Security Advisor under Bush, the Secretary of State, uh, Colin Powell, and the Attorney John Ashcroft, the Attorney General, all had no idea that it was Vice President Dick Cheney who authorized this memorandum on his own. <laughs> so when they got back, all got back to the White House, Bush, you know, conveniently is on vacation. He's in Texas, Crawford, his ranch. So that means that Bush wasn't there, but it was Cheney. And they all found out that they were out of the loop regarding this memorandum, which was highly unconstitutional. And the White House legal counsel was behind it. And the people like John Yu and Richard Attenborough, you know, the names are never brought up. They passed this provision, which caused three main provisions, which caused high controversy with, you know, the Department of Justice and even, you know, foreign legal counsels from around the world, which led to, by the way, an arrest warrant for those who signed this bill. And they've expounded on three provisions. One was the expanded surveillance abilities of law enforcement inside the United States, tapping phones, domestic and international flies without a warrant. Two, mm -hmm easier interagency communication to allow federal agencies to effectively use all available resources in counterterrorism efforts. In other words, a blank check for these people. And it doesn't matter whether if they label you a terror, a terrorist. Meanwhile, it's not up to the Department of Justice anymore. It's up to the president to label you a terrorist. Yeah. Three, increased penalties for terrorism on an expanded list of activities which would qualify for terrorism charges, meaning indefinite detention outlined in the Patriot Act. Hey, guess what? That's what's happening to Americans right now who are labeled terrorists in the January 6th uh, uh, riot. Right. Yeah. That's what's happening currently. Well, hey, and by the way, 20 years later, it's a visiting on Americans. After um, after Snowden came out with it um, and released all the documents that he released, hmm. you know what they did? They turned around and said, okay, 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 okay. We won't spy on you anymore. But what we're going to do is we're going to strike a deal with MI6. Mm. And that any information that they they are allowed 
to spy on American citizens in the United States. We will not stop them. And if they find information on you, then they can turn it over to U.S. intelligence and U.S. intelligence can then use it against you to to hold you to account. Mm. Right? So not only is your own government spying on you illegally, they have employed foreign agents to spy on you and to then turn the information over, right? And so this was one of the things that was going on with the, the counterintelligence agencies when they were spying on people was they had to find excuses for getting this information. So what they can do is they can spy on you, get the information, turn the information over to MI6, and then have MI6 then send the information back and they can utilize that information against you. Yeah, I, I look, the worrisome part about all this, Tommy, is that, you know, before the attacks of September 11, 2001, and before the signing of the Patriot Act by President Bush, was that there were walls for a reason. And those walls were basically so that certain agencies couldn't, like, access information. So, in other words, they had to go to a... In other words, if the NSA wanted to conduct a wireless uh, tapping program on a specific individual... <laughs> who's, you know, suspected of terrorism, they actually had to go to a, a court order. And, you know, if it was a foreign national, it's called a FISA warrant, right? So when it comes to a domestic person who's labeled as terrorist, they had to go through a court order, and then they had to produce an argument about why this person is actually deemed a terrorist in the first place and what warrants a, a separate wiretap on him. And when it comes to like investigating your emails or your cell phone, that's a separate issue. Now you have to go to to get a, you have to go to another court to approve judicial court and approve for a uh, a warrant based on that. Now with the the attacks that gave rise to the Patriot Act, all of those walls from the FBI to the NSA to you know the CI, all these agencies, local and domestic, all of these walls are gone. And all those provisions, now there's no warrant. Now they could just take your information and store it, which is what they did in 2003 when they built the Utah Data Center. And William Binney came out and he said that the NSA, and this is the reason why he quit, him and Kirk Wiebe and, and uh, Edward Loomis, they all saw that the programs that the NSA were running after 9-11 was, it was invasive. Right. And so their, their program was actually um, um, a thin thread, which was a program where it would protect the person. Um, in other words, they would grab your information but protect the identity of the person. And there was this wall between other agencies invasive collecting that information. Well, the NSA at the 9-11 implemented a program to replace that, and it was called Trailblazer, but it didn't work. But guess what? All the NSA contractors and contractors from the U.S. Army and other agencies poured in tens and tens of millions. It was like an $80 million program. Meanwhile, the Thin Threat program, you know, they got no attention to it, but it worked. Mm. And it helped, the, you know, the person and hide their identity, you know, protect their identity. With uh, Trailblazer, no, that wasn't the case. The NSA then said, all right, that program didn't work. Now they're just invasive and they take your program. So later on, uh, thanks to one technician from at and named Mark Klein, um, I think it was 2007 or six or seven, he went into a, a room in San Francisco where, you know, he's checking the rooms and notices. Oh, uh, that's a server room. They had that little yeah. secret room behind the server yeah. room. 631A, that was the name of the room, yeah. 631A. And he had no idea, he had no access to it. Meanwhile, he's a, you know, he's the main technician of AT&T. Right. He's like, what the hell is this? Meanwhile, it was the NSA running um, um, running cables inside the mainframe of uh, the servers inside AT&T. And what happened was earlier that year, Obama, later on, 
um, uh, told uh, AT, went to the managers of AT and T and I think Verizon as well and said, "Can we have access to all of your customers' data without a warrant?" And they agreed. Yeah. And that was a big issue. So AT and T actually sued Obama, and so who did that? Uh, who was that guy that was running the? Um, he was running an email company, and uh, I think it was either the NSA or CIA came to him and said, "All right, here's what we need you to do. We need you to collect all the data and send it to us as it's passing through your servers." He refused, and his company got shut down. Do you remember this? Yes. And you know what? That's going to kill me because I, I remember seeing this not too long ago. It was about maybe four months ago, five months ago on YouTube. And um, yeah, I, I don't remember the guy's name. Yeah. So so what these guys, what what the intelligence agencies were doing, it's kind of like what they were doing with Twitter. If you look at what the Twitter file, like the Twitter files, mm. they were putting pressure on individual companies, uh, tech companies, like especially email companies and they were demanding that the email companies send like like forward a secondary draft of all emails flowing through their servers. And this guy refused. He was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. That breaks the that breaks the uh the the privacy of my users. I right. won't do it. And and so he ended up shutting down because they put so much pressure on him. And um uh, you know, it's just like you 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 use a lot of people use these services like Proton Mail because they're supposed to be encrypted. But it's like, okay, they can be as encrypted as they want. But if your your information is being forwarded from the server through an algorithm that grabs it and ships it out as soon as it touches that server then you're screwed, you know, like you're, all your information is going out. Was it Joseph Nacho? It could have been. From um, Georgia, uh, I want to say. Quest? He's the former CEO of Quest? Could have been. That could have been it. I want to say he was, uh, he was, he was, he ran his company out of Georgia, I want to say. But I'm not positive about that. Yeah, I, I'm. I, yeah, me neither. So I can't. Uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, they built. A, I mean, the NSA later on built a a um a data company, um, in Pine Bluff, Utah, called and, Facebook. Was it? No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I was gonna say. Hey, well, you know, you know, Facebook? you know, all social media co companies are funded through InQtel, so that which is the CIA branch. For financing if you look up inqtel it links you directly to the cia so the cia was running money through an ngo called inqtel and in laundering that money into social media companies to prop up specific social media companies well that's interesting that came out on abc news back in 2009 Okay. Just, I, 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 yeah, I, I, just like you look up Incutel CIA social media, and it'll, I mean, the first thing it'll pop up, I guarantee you, is going to be like ABC or CBS. Yeah, it comes right here. In, in, in dash Q dash tell. Yep. That's interesting. I never heard of this. Yeah. And that was back in 2009. That story was broke. Yeah, it's an American nonprofit venture capital based in Arlington, Virginia, of course. Funded by the CIA. And, yeah, funded by the CIA. Look at yeah. that. <laughs> and it was used to prop up social media companies like Facebook and Twitter. So when people like when people come out and say, Well, it's a it's a private company, bro. And I'm like, No, it's not. Go back and look at the history of it. Oh, it's very public. Where did, yeah. Where did the funding come from? Interesting. <laughs> like, the funding didn't come privately. You know, it's interesting. They also share, it says here, they sell, they have uh, 5,600 shares of Google. Mm. So they're, they're involved with the ownership of Google. Yeah. So 
wow, that's a big company too. I never heard of it. So yeah. thanks for telling me. Yeah, no doubt. Shoot. That's the type of crazy shit I'm interested in. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, it's stuff like this, you know. Well, like and like the two step rule, right? You know about the two step rule, right? No. All right. See, this is how they got Trump. All right. So what happens? You have the two step rule. This came in with the Patriot Act. It was like, let's say, let's say I suspect you of committing a a, a crime. So then I'm putting, I'm going to put resources on you. Now, anyone you talk to, I can now surveil. But not only can I surveil everyone you talk to, I can surveil everyone they talk to. That's the second step. It's the two-step rule. That's the branch out effect that you're going to so, say. It's interesting. So the way they were able to surveil Donald Trump in his presidency was they caught one of his low-level people on his campaign chatting with somebody who was a foreign intelligence agent, surveilled that person, surveilled the person above him, and then that person led them to Trump so then they could then surveil Trump because that was only two steps. It's oh, like right. it's like six degrees of Kevin Bacon, man. This <laughs> yes there is it's uh, two degrees of donald trump <laughs> yeah that's, that's something else man i didn't but know that's the it. rule they use to be able to surveil donald trump you know that that sounds familiar with the um the program that they ran with, under the clinton administration promis software um they claimed that the israelis were actually um using software to um monitor the uh the intelligence services uh and that was through the um the art student ring in 2000 1999 2000 and um you know fox 5 tried to blow the whistle on that they had the end of series it was supposed to be a 10-part series a lot of people don't realize that but it, it and i think it was only three parts or something like that fox had to shut it down i guess that was pressure from the israeli lobby uh um you know trying to you know alleviate the uh the illuminating and very expansive invasive nature of israeli intelligence inside the united states during that time um but not to get lost in the uh the topic in you know in 2012 um uh, you know our friend barack obama actually um renamed the patriot act to the usa uh freedom act uh in 2015 and then re reenacted the expired sections uh, to extend to 2019 of the old Patriot Act. So he got away with murder, uh, Barack, and he was actually worse than Bush when it comes to invasive uh, civil liberties of everyday Americans, and not just everyday Americans, but to yeah. people around the world. And it wasn't just the NSA now and the Five Eyes program. And for those who don't know what the Five Eyes program is, it's the five intelligence services of um, around the world. And, yeah, um, isn't it Canada? Involved, uh, isn't it Canada, yeah, Australia, one. UK, yeah. uh, yep. America? Yep. There's another one. What's the other? New one? Zealand. New Zealand. There you yeah. go. Well, yeah. now it's thirty. Countries. All them white and people. So, it's all the white people. Yeah, it's all. Damn them! It's not Africa. <laughs> <you see? laughs> these, you know, damn these practices, right? You know, damn it. Um. Yeah, it's actually all the major players in in uh signals intelligence yeah and so now all these countries you know could share intelligence about their own citizens with each other and um you know one of the big provisions was section 215 which was amended to disallow the nsa to continue its mass phone data collection program but by then it was too late because the utah data center was actually open for business um in 2014 and the place is a lot of people don't realize this actually exists, Tommy. I, you know, I tell people that, <coughs> like, what is that place? It's actually a data storage facility. It's located Area 51. Up. It's where yeah, they hide the aliens. It is bigger than Area 51. <laughs> it's, it's so big. In fact, the first day it was open in Pine Buff, Utah. The first time it opened, it, it used up half of the state's electricity and shut down electricity for like, 850,000 people and Jeez. basically I said my 
God, man, what the hell they got in there? And um, it's all maybe that's what maybe that's what they're doing here tomorrow. They're telling us our electricity is going to be off for two hours tomorrow. Maybe they're opening up a new fucking plant, uh, intelligence fucking server center in Orange, Texas. Well, yeah, well, if, if, if you're in, well, you're in Texas, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, guess what? They were supposed to build a second data center in Texas. I hope they don't. So there you go. I hope somebody blows it up. Maybe. Well, why is it somebody attacking this place? Right? You know, you can't. Well, in other words, you can't. You can't have you heard it. about the? Have you heard about the uh, the attacks on the um, power grids lately? Uh, I heard something like this on Twitter, but I'm not too familiar with it. So Can there was, so, so yeah, there was, all right. So I want to say like two or three months ago, it was in Virginia. Somebody shot up a power grid with a pistol. And then there was two guys that attacked a power grid in Washington state. And then I think it was just over this past weekend, some dude attacked a power grid just outside of Las Vegas. Well, why is this happening? I, I don't know why it's happening. I was just asking if you'd heard about it. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, no, that's... I Because people are crazy and are attacking power grids, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not about to put my hand on like a live wire, you know, just to, you know, screw the state over. Why yeah, don't they it's, just, it's take wild. A, why don't just take a bomb laden truck and go to the... Utah data center. Employee. Well, this last dude, from what I understand, by the way, I'm not advocating for that for those who are. <laughs> this last dude, from what I understand, it was crazy. He uh, he drove his car through the gate into the nuclear power plant, drove to the reactor, and lit his car on fire, and it ended up ended up melting down a transformer that, at this moment in time, happened to not be in use. Well, thank goodness. Yeah. I mean, like, some people, yeah, that's first of all, it's not helping anybody uh, by doing that because it affects <laughs> God knows how many people. Well, it just uh, shows you how effective the Patriot Act is. <laughs> right. Exactly. Right. Um, They'd rather stop parents going to schools and protesting the things their children are being taught then some wild motherfucker setting his car on fire and driving into a nuclear power plant. <laughs> I can't, I can't see like the actual long-term effects that would be beneficial in doing that. <laughs> what are you trying to cause a, a, you know, a secondary Chernobyl type of incident, you know, just, I don't know, man. I don't I, yeah. Know. You're hurting the very people that you're trying to help by doing that. Yeah, so, no, exactly. I yeah. I don't get it. But, so, um, well, let's get into the to the uh, long term effects of the Patriot Act because I mean we're having a lot of fun and we could probably talk for days about all all yeah, this I, crap that's been yeah. going on and like it's just it it's would be just, it would be like a week long podcast yes, yeah we we could talk forever on all this stuff it's just there's so much and it's so depressing sometimes. Oh, it's it's it, it. Yeah, I mean that that's the big issue. It's like none of this has a light at the end of the tunnel, right? And 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 it was originally sold to the American people that it was to be utilized only on foreign entities that intended to uh, cause harm to America, right? Yeah. Um, now we're looking that these these same tools that were created under the Patriot Act are being used on American citizens. Whether you brought up January 6th earlier, I brought up parents protesting the way their children are be taught, being taught at freaking uh, parent-teacher meetings. Um, the FBI is abusing the power and if I'm not mistaken, maybe you can answer this question. If I'm not mistaken, since 9-11, the United States has never been taken out of emergency. Like, how how did they say it? Emergency preparedness? Maybe that's it. It's like, um, we're always 
it's basically like we're always in a situation of a constant war. And um, if that's the case, and they're utilizing, they're they're perverting, they're abusing the power that is given to them under the War Powers Act, then um, I mean they can pretty much do whatever they want. Well, yeah, I mean, all right, so. What what happened was after the events of September 11, 2001, in that uh, first two months, was that it the the Emergency Preparedness uh, Act, as well as the um, the um, I want to say the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, right, the FISA Act, gave way to like an open ended like surveillance state forever, mm-hmm. and this right. there's no end to this. So in other words, what can I, how can I put it like this? So I'll put it like this. When I talked about section 206 of the Patriot Act, just imagine this in simple terms. So I, you know, I, have to, I don't want to lose the audience. So what this section does, and this is forever, by the way, this, that, there's no end to this. Because like you said, we're in that constant state of like, you know, I guess heightened security or terrorism, whatever you want to call it, because we're not at war with a country, we're at war with an idea which has no end, which was ingenious when they, when they, you know, said that, oh, we're at war on terrorism. What does that even mean? Right. So yeah. section 206 allows for, and I'll just keep it in the United States. It allows for any state and local authority to conduct roving surveillance, as I talked about before, not just abroad, but I'm talking about here in the States. So in other words, the FBI or the NYPD, or the Joint Terrorism Task Force of your city can wiretap every single phone or mobile communication device or even your internet connection that a suspect might be using if he's labeled a suspect, right? Without ever having to identify the suspect by his name. This is the horrifying aspect of this Patriot Act. Now, this gave the FBI a blank check, literally a blank check to violate the communication privacies of countless innocent Americans. And the first person to actually sue this, you know, the State Department was um, uh, uh, Chris Hedges. He sued Obama and he won. But Obama said, Obama's lawyer said, no, Chris Hedges has no standing and threw out the suit. And so what is worse is that these blank check wiretap orders can remain in effect for up to 12 months or an extended period of time of up to five years. So imagine what these people could do regarding, say, hey, we think this guy might be involved with terrorism. Let's do a a welfare, like a a single intelligence check on him. So they collect all your privacy and data without a warrant. And basically just stake outside your house and, you know, listen to your phone taps, you know, just listen to everything and read all your emails and text messages. And, you know, if they see something suspicious, you know, they might, you know, arrest you or detain you. And um, it's called indefinite detention. And that was first visited upon the detainees <laughs> at Gitmo. But now it's at Americans. And like I said, with the January 6th rioters, you know, some of those people didn't even get the access to a lawyer. Right. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're being detained in solitary confinement for uh, trespassing. Yeah, can you imagine? Like a simple that's a misdemeanor. Yeah. So yeah, I, I dropped think... my cigarette. Sorry. No, fine. <laughs> Go ahead. I can yeah. hear you. I still got the headphones on. I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> yeah, I like. I don't know how many people can appreciate the horrors about the Patriot Act and what this means, as you say, in the long term. Well, in the long term, basically, what could happen is is that the the State Department or the the House of Representatives or the Democrats, they ever got together and wanted to become truly authoritarian and totalitarian, is that they can actually reauthorize the Patriot Act. Oh, you think they couldn't? Because on March 10th of 2020 there, uh, Tommy, of all people, Jerry Nadler proposed 
to reauthorize the Patriot Act. And then it was approved by a majority of the House of Representatives. Well, they, and what I was trying to think of, they have the they they have the United States labeled in a state of emergency since 9-11. Okay. And okay. I, I, I just surprised. found the I just found the article I was looking for because I, I wanted to I I think even you'll be shocked by this article. Because when I read it, I was like, what the hell? All right. Here's a list of the 31 national emergencies that have been in effect for years. This was published in January of 2019. All right. So this is before COVID. November 14th, 1979. The national emergency with respect to Iran in response to the Iran hostage crisis. Never been lifted. November 14th, 1994. National emergency with respect to the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction that combined two previous national emergencies focused on weapons of mass destruction. Never been lifted. January 2nd, 1995. National emergency with respect to prohibiting transactions with terrorists who threaten to disrupt the Middle East peace process placed economic sanctions in response to the Jerusalem bombing. Never been lifted. March 15th, 1995. National emergency with respect to prohibiting certain transactions with respect to the development of of Iranian petroleum resources was an effort to prevent potential deals between oil companies. Never been lifted. October 21st, 1995. National emergency with respect to blocking assets and prohibiting transactions with significant narcotics traffickers centered in Colombia was declared after increased reports of drug cartels laundering money through American companies. Never been lifted. March 1st, 1996. National emergency with respect to regulations of the anchorage and movement of vessels with respect to Cuba was after civilian planes were shot down near Cuba. Never been lifted. When's the last time we had an issue with Cuba? That was in 1996. Yeah. 97. National emergency with respect to blocking Sudanese government property and prohibiting transactions with Sudan implemented economic trade sanctions. Never been lifted. I can go 2001, 2001, 2001, 2001, 2003. This keeps going, man. They announce these national emergencies. They never lift them. I have a list here of 31. How many do we not know about? Well, that's stunning. I didn't know it was that much. God sakes. <laughs> I don't even know what to tell you. <laughs> wow. That's a, a, a seam stealer. I'll send you that article. When we're yeah, please there. do. And it, and this is, this is um, a mainstream cozy with the power elite article this is from abc news when was it written 2019 oh just recent too yeah right in the middle of sucking the dick of the elites that's unbelievable yeah that's unbelievable 31 national emergencies that have been in effect for years Never been lifted. Not as stunning. I wonder why they haven't been lifted. I'd like to know because it gives them that power. Yeah, right, right. Sure, I can understand. Like there isn't. It's as good as it's as good as declaring martial law, really. Sure, but there has to be like uh, critics of the uh, of that too. No, because you you declare a national emergency, the public forgets about the national emergency. And you never re- you never lift the restrictions. Because it would help 
yeah. you know, the state. You know, you li- if you lift, if you never lift the restrictions, you continue to have the emergency powers. Right. Yeah. The emergency. Right. Okay. I understand what you're saying, but wow. That's, you know, 31. Yeah. 31. You want to read through 2001 real quick? We can go through 2001. National emergency with respect to blocking property of persons who threaten international stabilization efforts in the Western Balkans imposed sanctions on those aiding Albanian insurgents in Macedonia. That was in June of 2001. August 2001, national emergency with respect to export control regulations renewed presidential power to control exports in a national emergency since the Export Administration Act of 1979 lapsed. September 14, 2001. Oh, shit. We lost Adam. Well, damn. We were about to get into good stuff. Looks like he may have lost connection. Let me see. Mm, well, he didn't text me. I don't know what's going on. Well, that sucks. Maybe the feds got him. He is in New York City. It's a lot easier to get to him than it is to me. So maybe the feds got him. All right. So we'll keep running through this for y'all's sake. September 14th, 2001. National emergency with respect to certain terrorist attacks was in response to the terrorist attacks of 9-11 and the continuing and immediate threat of further attacks on the United States. Still in effect. September 23rd, 2001. National emergency with respect to persons who commit, threaten to commit, or support terrorism was in response to the terrorist attacks of 9-11. And that it, it just keeps going. We have several in 2004, 2006, 7, 8, 10, 11, 11, 12, 14, 14, 14, 15. Just constantly. All the way up to 2019. And, uh, you think they haven't declared any since COVID? Sadly mistaken. Bottom line is they're utilizing the Patriot Act and the powers that were given to them through these national emergency acts to bottleneck you, to stop you. And hey, look, Adam's back. Hey, I was just talking. The state, the state is listening. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was like, he's in New York City. It's a lot easier I have, to him I than it is to me. That never happened. Usually you're the one with the connection problems. Right. right? <laughs> <laughs> I have to apologize. My computer just suddenly restarted on its own. And I'm like, wow, I didn't press any buttons. You you know, I don't know what yeah. the hell happened there. Yeah. Well, no, I was just... uh. I just continued. I I saw that you had disconnected. I continued reading through through oh, these good. for the audience, and uh, I was explaining that they're utilizing these emergency powers that have been in mm. place since the seventies to to limit your freedoms, and they're doing that like whether it's through the 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 veil of um 911 or through the veil of covid they're utilizing these national emergencies never let an emergency go to waste they're utilizing these national emergencies in order to curb your liberties and to 
enslave you to the to the state. Yeah, I, look, um, and I think a lot of the uh, the provisions that have been coming out as of late. I'm talking about like you know you're talking about you know many many decades ago, but as of late, they're like almost it's it's almost like they're worsening, and. I think what's yeah, see, about- but I don't look at it as I don't look at them as separate. I look at them as, as one whole thing. No, I as got building you. blocks. Yeah, like, as building blocks. Too. Yeah, right, right. You got to do a little at a time. You can't just dive in. Like I didn't you know, meet my, I didn't meet my wife and eat her pussy saying, that right. yeah. the, you'll the, catch the first minute. The majority of the public. Yeah, yeah. You don't uh, you, you don't eat her pussy the first minute. You got to warm her up to taking her <laughs> pants <laughs> off. Okay. You eat her pussy like the, the minute you meet her. That's called rape. You got to like convince her to give it up. <laughs> oh my god! Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I would have no. Listen, I think that's a that's, that's a fine point because let's just say if they all just came right out and said, "All right, we're going to you know start invasive privacy issues and laws and regulations." Well, everybody's going to stop you know fighting each other over sexism and racism and just basically turn around and say, "Hey, wait a minute, you're we're not you're not going to do that." Yeah, but you get people used to it. It's yeah, like one of right. the things can, that um, right, right, right. Edward Snowden always says, is the, mo- the thing he's most disappointed about is people aren't more up in arms about the revelations. Oh, I, you know what? He, I think he hit the nail on the head because when that came out, what was it, 2011? When he went to, when he was in China and meeting with uh, Glenn Greenwald, <coughs> I said, wow, this is, you know, here it is, right? And- well, and you know what the corporate press said? Oh yeah, we already knew that. Right, right. But yeah, it's no big deal. Yeah, we yeah, already knew I that. Can't, well, tell me, I couldn't believe he only revealed one percent. I mean, he still has files that he hasn't revealed yet, and I don't know if he's ever going to. But nevertheless, Tommy, everybody should have been up in arms because even the press got you know unbelievably the legacy media even report on it because it was so big and so enormous that they couldn't ignore it. So it was a huge issue. And guess what? Nothing. Nothing. To me, I can't, I, like, I'm like i stunned that nobody really wants to pay attention to these issues. And that's why I make it a big issue on my, and I'm not, you know, I'm nobody. But on my WordPress, I upload so many files that Snowden has released, you know, the important ones anyway, regarding data mining programs. Like yeah. Stratus Ivy. Uh, 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 I think it was QQuest or they had these silly names, but like I upload them on my WordPress so that people can see and understand. I put it on you uh, like Twitter and stuff like that. Mm. But I'm like, you know, I would love to see a huge platform, like say, unfortunately, I hate to use like Tim Pool, right? Somebody who has a very big platform that could reach a lot of people to talk about these issues that we're talking yeah. about right now. No, they'd rather talk about, you know, January 6th. They'd rather talk about, you know, something that's, you know, trivial. Hey, January 6th was bigger than 9-11, don't you know? <laughs> you believe they, they actually said that. <laughs> I mean, that's not Lord, man. It was oh. the new Pearl Harbor. I mean, God, <laughs> I cringe when I heard. <laughs> you know who said that specifically? I don't know, but I don't know who's. I don't, I can look it up. I, I mean, I can find that out is, real quick. I right. remember when that, I, I want to say it was out. Well, in wait. I... No. It was probably Don Lemon. <laughs> I hate that guy. <laughs> Don Lemon. Oh. <laughs> I mean, uh, Sean Hattie, you know. Ugh. I want to say, I want to say it was a, it was a Democrat that said it. It was a Democrat. I do know that. I just don't remember who the first one to say it was. Because it's become a talking point. Yes, it was. January says it worse than I'm gonna cheat. I'm I'm looking it up right now. Oh, are you really? Yeah, I'm trying to figure out uh, who, who uh, the first person to say it was. Well, that was in 2021. You know what's you know what I noticed too? A lot of these online uh, FBI oh wait, wait, wait. You got it. FBI agent says January sixth was worse than nine eleven. It was an FBI agent. Well, this was in 2022. A quarter to, according to former FBI agent Peter Strzok, go figure. 
9-11 is nothing compared to January 6th in terms of how dangerous it was to American democracy. <laughs> wow. FBI agent saying that. I don't know if he was the first one to say it, but I don't need to look any further. If it, Peter, But it's Peter Strzok. I mean, if if you don't know who Peter Strzok was. No, I'm he, not. He, I heard the name, but I'm not familiar with it. All right. Him. So he was one of the, he was, he was at the, he was one of the front runners on doing the investigation on Donald Trump. He was the one who was, he was texting his concubine that they were going to find a way to stop Donald Trump before Donald Trump was ever elected in 2016. Oh, fantastic. I mean, this dude, <laughs> this dude was a piece of work long ago. <laughs> you know, not, and not to like, give Donald Trump any type of credit because I think he's an egotistical narcissist, but guess who is the first person to actually um, indefinitely postpone the Patriot Act? Jimmy Carter. Donald Trump. Oh, shit. Damn the it. Only first I was close. I was close. They were both one-term presidents. <laughs> with, with the... <laughs> yeah so donald trump and jimmy carter yeah that's a close comparison. that's great i like that. um but yeah he did that in um uh i want to say march or, or march or april of 2020 oh yeah yeah he's he's the first but it's amazing that you know there's a lot of faults with Donald Trump, but two things that he did that really like um, that really took I really took notice. One was that the indefinite po uh, postponement of the uh, the freedom of the USA Patriot Act. Right. The renaming of it. Also, he's also the other the only president to actually stop the CIA program of arming the Syrian Mujahideen um, Timber Sycamore. He ended it in 2017. Yeah, and lasted, I knew about that. Yeah, that lasted six. six well, years. he he also questioned he also questioned the existence of NATO, which you would never get. Oh, I never. Even, even though really? he, yeah, he 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 didn't do anything about it, except for say, look, man, if y'all aren't going to pay your fair share, then there's not going to be any NATO anymore because we're not covering your fucking ass anymore. And it was like, yes, thank you. That was like, all right. It, the thing with Trump was he was not, he wasn't ideological. He was a businessman. He was strictly looking at these things from a CEO's point of view. And he's like, you're asking us to lose money. I don't want to lose money. <laughs> you know, like, and that was uh, like the way he attacked it. Holy mackerel. I had no idea. Thanks for telling me about that. No idea that he did that. You know, yeah. it's a, he get all the, like all the, um, the critics and criticisms of Donald Trump, there are many, yeah. but he, you know, like you never hear like, you know, the things they did right. And um, like, just like those little Dude, things. Dude, right he, he walked, he walked across from South Korea to North Korea. He walked across the DNZ with no security. That was incredible. I, I didn't know that either. Yeah. It's like, Okay. He he's, he, like, he don't, he don't, he's that type of guy. Well, no one can touch me, you know? Yeah, exactly. But there, it was that, it was that CEO instinct. It made him actually a better president than we've ever had. And it was his narcissism that made him so bad. And, oh my God, you, you talk about narcissism. Yeah. He's the most narcissistic president that we probably ever seen in our lifetime. Right. And, and it was the narcissism. It was those points of narcissism that was like, dude, you could be doing so much better, you know, <laughs> but at the same time, he did challenge everything. It was just like, he did challenge things and it was, it was fun to watch. It was all right, cool. Yeah. Walk across the DNZ. If if I'm if I if I'm a detractor of Donald Trump, I'm cheering for him to walk across it. And if I'm if I like Donald Trump, I'm cheering for him to walk across it. Because if I'm a detractor, I'm like maybe he'll get shot on the way there. And <laughs> yeah, you know, like 
Right, right, right. So right. it's like, all right, like you did something that was like never done before. Yeah, never right. 50 never years, done. you know? Yeah. And you know, I mean it's it's a total disaster now, but I mean it there were some pretty remarkable moments in those four years where you're like, Really? This guy? All right. Yeah, like you would think that he would be able to be more in line with the state. You know what? One thing about not to stray away from the topic of the Patriot Act, but no, we're good. You know, we'll probably do another one since you got disconnected. We'll just fucking catch up. No, that's right. I mean, you know, okay. just to add too is that Donald Trump is the first president to actually lift the veil about how government is really run and how corrupt it is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. He really showed us. Yeah. Unfortunately, he kind of lost his edge though, man. After well, being yeah, in office, it in was like, office. yeah. Right. Well, it wasn't even that. It was like they it's so easy to buy these politicians off. It was like he lost his edge, you know. Yeah. He now was. he's now he's out there like he's um advocating for McCarthy as speaker and you know and it's like all the guys all the people that were voted in the congress um kind of in his shadow are like what the fuck are you talking about no we're not going to like we're not going to like McCarthy as speaker like we're doing this for a reason you were the bull in the china shop we're just here to sweep up the china shop you know like Bless his yeah. heart. <laughs> yeah. Right, right, right. It's like he didn't even understand what his role was. Uh, Which I think is part of why he lost in 2020 is is a lack of understanding what his role was. Because it was that anti-establishment perspective that he brought that people really liked. And after becoming president, getting entangled in the establishment, he didn't have that edge to him anymore. He didn't have the edge to him anymore. Right. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, you know, to quote the Blade Runner, the light that burns twice as bright burns half as long. Yeah. And that's Donald Trump for you. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't worry, because we're going to probably, you know, I talked about, again, We uh, I talked about this with Kyle Matovic. Uh, we're probably going to get Governor Ron DeSantis as president in 2024. You think? Yeah, I think he wins. If he runs. I'm well, just not, run. I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced he's going to run. I haven't, he hasn't. You're not get, convinced he's going to run. He actually said he was going to run. Did he? What yeah. did he say? I miss, oh, so I miss that. So I didn't know that. Um, And I just read, and by the way, up here in New York, I don't know if it's in your state, in Texas, Uh, the New York Post ran an article yesterday Guess who's running for president in 2024? The Democrats. Uh, well, Joe Biden. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, in other words, uh, yeah, the Republicans are going to win the president. Well, I, I, the last I, the last person I heard say like announce or say they were announcing on the Republican side is um, oh oh who is the guy that Donald Trump had on his staff that. The mustache guy, um, foreign policy dude. I can't think of his name. I can oh, see John his Bolton. face. Yes, thank you, John Bolton. Yes, yes, yeah. Porn stash McBolton. <laughs> he does have a porn stash. Legendary. <laughs> yeah, I, I could not think of John Bolton for the life of me. Thanks for bailing me I, out. I, I, <laughs> he's a prick. He's a evil. He should be. He should be hung at the Hague. But I, um, but, but from what I understand, he's running and I'm like, who's going to vote for that guy? No one's going to, yeah, no one is going to vote for a snake. Yeah. So. Um, but you know what, you know, just to go back a little bit, a lot of people don't realize is that uh, Bush actually established a law in, uh, after the attacks, like, I think it was like four months after the attacks, it was called the President's surveillance program. You ever heard about that? Mm-mm. Yeah, it was part of a program, another program called the Terrorist Surveillance <coughs> Program. And it was actually established pursuant to an executive order that authorized the NSA to surveil phone calls without a warrant. And um, actually, the first company to speak out against it was the um, 
the uh, uh, the Electronic uh, Frontier Foundation, which published an article, um, quote, it was, uh, I think it was called, um, I shouldn't say quote, but it was like AT's role in surveillance of U.S. customers or something like that. Mm. And it, it illuminated, it was the first article that called out Bush and illuminated the abuse of privacy laws and cell phone providers who actually, like I said before, were giving the NSA all the customer data. And you talk about that guy that came out in opposition to the NSA. And um, I, I like, again, I, I forgot who that was, but basically, you know, he got, he got in trouble for it. Now, U S attorney, Alberto Gonzalez actually said the, the program was on, was authorized warrantless intercepting where the government had a reasonable quote, reasonable basis to conclude that one party to the communication is a member of Al Qaeda or affiliated with Al Qaeda or even a member of an organization affiliated with Al Qaeda or working in support with Al Qaeda. And that one party to the conversation was outside the United States, a foreign, a foreign entity. So that gave them the wide range of powers outside mm. the United States. So yeah. you have all these, you know, you talk about all those provisions, in like 31, you say, um, and then, you know, you have provisions that are coming out after 2001, 2000, those key years between 2001, 2003. And what, what I, yeah, no, go ahead. I was, I was scrolling through it whenever we had lost connection. And, um, one of the things I was shocked about was like three of them were during 2014. And it was like, what happened in 2014? What happened, what happened in 2014? That's the Obama. That's the Obama administration. Well, that guy. I guess yeah. he got bored between bombing children. Yeah. Well, the second listen, the second administration Obama was worse than the first because that's when the invasive privacy laws began. Right. Um, and also the funding of them. You know the the uh, the terrorists in Syria and um you know the programs that uh, were along with that and of course you know that was signed off by Israel Turkey and Saudi Arabia um I want but I don't know specifically what happened in 2014 that how many do you know how many were in 2014 it was five like six three or four let me look hate to put you in extra no work you're today. fine I just gotta Scroll over here. That's 94, 97, 2001, 2003, 2003, 2004, 2006, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 11, 12, 14, 14, 14. So it was 3 and 14, 3 and 15. Yeah. Three and fourteen and three and fifteen. So you had um in fourteen blocking property of certain persons co contributing to the situation in Ukraine. Oh yeah. We we overthrew the government in Ukraine and installed oh, for God's uh, sakes, that's right. That's yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I did too. I did a podcast on that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, that All is right. the, um, the, uh, the, the, the revolution of dignity. All right. And this one that has to do with February of that year. Yep. We overthrew and... a Victor Yushchenko actually. Yeah. Cause this was signed March 16th, 2014. Right. And when I say it... we overthrew Yushchenko, I'm saying that we CIA, for the nationalists, right. The CIA who USAI, USAI, they, the CIA utilized USAID in, uh, funded and overthrew the government right. of Ukraine to install uh the government that is now in power. Right, Viktor Yanukovych. I said his name wrong. Viktor Yanukovych. Yeah. yeah, Yanukovych. There you go. Yeah. Um, um April April of 2014 um South Sudan in respect to their ongoing civil war Oh my God! Yeah, okay. So Dave DeCamp, who's like, a, you know, he's phenomenal. DeCamp's awesome. Yeah, yeah, he's God. He's he's a he's a Britannica. Any anybody involved with Libertarian Institute? I should like, go. I should just get him on here and go through each of these dates with him. 
and just be like, or him or um um Daniel um oh god, Ron Paul's right hand man, McAdams. McAdams. Yeah, get Daniel McAdams and Dave DeCamp on here. Alone. Yeah, yeah and just guys, go through these dates and just be like, all right, what was this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, those guys are just, I to me, they're the best when it comes to geopolitics in the country. Yeah. Unbiased, unfettered, like they're not persuaded by any type of prejudice and they just report the news. And you they ever, do it prolifically. prolifically. You, you ever had, uh, you ever chatted with Daniel McAdams? No, you know, I actually, incidentally, Tommy, when Reed Coverdale of the Naturalist Capitalist Show and Eric Jackman, uh, they invited me to go with them to the Libertarian Conference, the Ron Paul Libertarian Conference. I actually went and saw McAdams there speaking. The One of the most fun shows I've ever had in my life was recording with McAdams, man. Was it? Oh, he's so good. He's a great he's speaker. funny. Yeah, like, he's funny. I didn't humorous. even realize. I didn't even realize. Like, I've been listening to him for years. But until I started talking to him, I didn't realize how funny he was. And we just had so much fun just laughing and making jokes. It was right. it was a really good episode. He's he was one he was I <laughs> I took away from the whole conference. He was the best speaker there. Oh, he's good. Yeah, he's yeah. great, man. Yeah. And like I'm six foot ten and he's short. So yeah. when I when I saw him. He was like really short guy. And I just like, I said, Hey Dan, that's a great speech. And you know, this and that, he was fantastic. Yeah. All right. And then we had May of 2014. Central Africa Republic was in response to violence toward humanitarian aid workers. What was and, going on? And, by the way, uh, just to ask Tommy, is this involving As Sahab, the militant uh, organization affiliated? It's not. It's not mentioning any because that's uh, what's involved with uh, Sudan itself. And well, yeah, this says. Um, so you had the South Sudan civil war. Yeah. In April, in May, contributing to the conflict in in the Central African Republic which I'm not sure which African Republic, which Central African Republic that's talking about. Um, then March 8th, 2015, suspending entry of certain persons contributing to the situation in Venezuela. All right. So April 1st of 2015, um, engaging in significant malicious cyber enabled activities um chinese cyber attacks so this had that was specifically to do with china november of 2015 situation in burundi oh brunei okay i'm sorry how do you say it brunei okay after a failed coup i don't think i'm familiar with that um, I'm not. Okay. So that's what you had going on in 2014 and 15. So, but, um, you know, the public won't know that because they're too busy talking about Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> I hate to use that. I'm, 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 I overuse that term. I always that's say the public is used to Tom Brady's stats with Kim Kardashian's rear. <laughs> <laughs> I don't say anything else like a broken record, uh, right? So, yeah, but, <clears throat> so you're talking about the important issues that we should be talking about that, like the Libertarian Institute talks about. Yeah. And, um, uh, and like I said, I'll send you that article. Yeah, please do. Cause I, I didn't know you had never seen it. So, yeah, because you know what I'll do is I'll even do a YouTube video about that too. Yeah. So I, I thank you very much for bringing that up. Yeah, no doubt. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, you know, what does this have to do with the Patriot Act? You know, people are saying, but it has everything to do with it because the, everything is an extension of the September 11th attacks. And the main the main ripple effect is the Patriot Act. Mm. The Patriot Act is a huge ripple effect. Yeah, the, the reason, the program. reason, well, the reason they're able to go after parents that are speaking out at, at PTA meetings is because of the Patriot Act. That's right. what they're right. utilizing the Patriot Act 
to call you a domestic terrorist for disagreeing with them or for being in Washington, D.C. on January 6th. They're utilizing the Patriot Act, the powers that they absorbed through the Patriot Act to go after these people. You know, I'm so glad you brought that up because I totally forgot. Now, I again, I live in New York and I don't, by the way, I don't read the New York Post. It's it's a rag. <laughs> People know the Post is a rag for decades here in New York. But nevertheless, thankfully, the Post did something right, which is a left-leaning newspaper. The, the New York actually sued Joe Biden. And what they did was, was that Biden administration authorized the FBI to conduct surveillance on the parents protesting the school boards that you brought mm. up. I'm so glad you brought this up. Right. Because... Um, and I don't know where this guy's from. He's an attorney named, um, I'm going to say his last name wrong, is Todd Rokia or something like that. I don't know. I, I can't say his name right. Thank you, uh, New York accent. You know, I have this lousy New York accent. Anyway, he's a former member of Congress. And he actually took the lead in the lawsuit against uh, the Biden administration and the Attorney General uh, uh, Garland. Uh, um, Merrick, Merrick, Garland. Merrick Garland. Thank yeah. you, right. And it, who's the uh, and of course the uh, the education secretary um, uh, Miguel uh, Card Cardino Cardona, so he opened up this this lawsuit against them, and it was just this this guy from Indiana I think it was from Indiana or Illinois somewhere in the in the uh, uh, north uh, the, the north of the region, and actually opened up a suit against the Biden administration and his uh, legal counsel, because Biden authorized the Department of Justice. To to wiretap, you know the the, the families of who are protesting. Yeah. Well, you, well, you know how it started, right? No, tell tell. Me. So it was like the DOJ sent the school boards a letter that the school boards then signed and sent back to the DOJ, claiming that there were radical parents or that that they that were showing up to these meetings and were causing were wreaking havoc yeah. and the teachers feared for their lives. So basically what the DOJ did was say, if you send us this letter signed, then we will come and investigate the parents that are causing problems. So the DOJ wrote the letter, sent it to the school board, the school board signed it, sent it back to the DOJ, and then the DOJ started investigating the parents. And I believe Biden actually tried to invoke the Patriot Act in regards to domestic terrorism on those parents. But Jesus. because of Trump, he suspended the Patriot Act so he couldn't actually enact it. Wow. 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 Eesh. Yeah. Hope and change. Yeah. <laughs> they don't listen. We, you know, me and Tommy are preaching to the choir because everybody who listens to the show knows that there's no difference between left and right. But, you know, for those who are new, you know, there is there is only one party. And as George Carlin said, you ain't in it. Yeah. <laughs> you ain't in it. I don't know, man. After seeing else. that, after seeing all that the the crap going on between gates and bobert and mccarthy and i'm like oh my god right. i kind of like gates man and i kind of like bobert <laughs> he's, a, he's a creeper he's a creeper it's like, a, hey, a broken clock is right twice yeah. a day a broken clock is right twice a day right, right? well uh, somebody somebody said the other day that that bobert was going to get kicked out of congress and start an only fans and i'd be like i'll be the first oh subscriber <laughs> i'd pay her um, to teach me how to cook like i don't care man like, she, well, she that, might chick, do well. that chick's fighting i she's that chick is in there fighting because you she, know she's just she'll a, be a millionaire many times over she does that yeah well she's just an average freaking restaurant owner from colorado who got tired of gun people, laws and i'm you know, like a lot of this yeah i'm on place. your side i don't agree with everything she says but at least i'm on her side at least i know she's a normal person mm, normal define normal normal like blue collar like <laughs> okay I, agree. I was just about to say that she resonates <laughs> with the working community like the right. blue collar yeah she resonates. that's why yeah. i think 
you know, I, I told this to Kyle yesterday. Mar too, Marjorie Taylor Green does too. Yeah, but, oh man. Can we she, get better advocates here, Tommy? <laughs> she's just not. But but you see what I here's the thing, man. I work. I all right. So I work for a lumber store, right? And so when I hear like Gates or Marjorie Taylor Green or Lauren Bobert speak, I hear a customer. I hear somebody I deal with daily. So to me, it doesn't bother me. I'm like. All right, I don't agree with you, but you're not being a total fucking asshole, you know. And yeah. and that's kind of the way I look at it. Whereas if I hear McConnell speak or or Biden or Kevin McCarthy or any of these like career politicians, I have nothing in common with those people. Right, right, exactly. exactly. Like at least with this other group of people, I'm like at least I have something in common with these people. The language. I, uh, yeah, I could go sit down at a diner and have a conversation with them. No, you can't. Yeah, I could. I could. <laughs> you're, you're. I may. I may walk around, walk, walk away frustrated, but I could have a conversation <laughs> with them. <laughs> Tommy, you're much more universal than them. I mean, God's sake, from just talking. To you. Man, I'm just a redneck, man. I have chickens. A, you're modest. <laughs> you're, but you're dripping with modesty. They're not. I mean, they're very obtuse. But yeah. like, uh, but I agree with you. I, like, they speak the language of the people, which is the reason why I think in the future, like, they're going to create their own party. Yeah. You know, so again, I brought this up with Kyle too. I think what's going to happen is it's going to be a split in the in the conservative party. It's going to be a big split to Trumpers and the, the DeSantis people. Yeah, 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 for real. But I won't even I I won't even insult like the 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 kind of MAGA side of the Republican Party because. Like you said, they speak the language. So I'm like, eh, at least we have some like down to earth people like trying to represent somebody. You know, well, that's where the left went wrong. I mean, because they, they don't do well with reading the people. And it's something that I find absurd that, you know, Biden got 81 million votes when just four years prior, we had the largest non voting turnout in history. Yeah. You're, you're trying to tell me we had the largest voting turnout in history four years later? Uh, well, look, I don't yeah, think, I, I don't think it was voting turnout. I think it was um I think they found I think they found a way to um uh between mail in ballots and um going around and and picking up ballots. I, I think they figured out a way to uh move people that wouldn't normally vote. Yeah, I hear you. And like, you know, um if you if you have a ballot show up on your doorstep as opposed to having to go somewhere and do something, it, you're going to react differently to it, right? Sure. Maybe you're not oh, going to leave God. the house and go vote, but if it shows up in the mail and all you got to do is check a box and sign your name, that's that's like nothing. Literally, yeah, it's literally yeah. nothing. So, right. so I think they found a. Uh, a loop uh, a loophole a catch-22 where well, they could i mean look yeah. you know, there's i mean they've been trying to get 16 year olds to vote i mean like they don't care if you're interested in voting they just want your vote they just want you to vote right they just yeah. want you. It doesn't matter yeah um, they just they want the power that you have the ability to give them and if they could get eight-year-olds to vote they would you yeah. wouldn't be surprised yeah I so, wouldn't put no limits on them. They don't they don't care about the quality. They want the quantity. Right. The, right. Exactly. Because that's what doc democracy is, right? It's popularity rules. True. So that's it. That's the whole game. Get the most votes, not the best votes. All the smartest people in the world could vote for the Republicans. The Republicans could get 20 votes. The Democrats could get 5 million. Who has more votes? Doesn't matter if the smartest people in the world voted for the Republicans. The Democrats win because they have more votes. Tommy Salmons is an enemy combatant. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that, that, that seems that, like a good place to shut it down. <laughs> We're the we're, we're, we're listen. We're the final frontier. We're the final enemy. Yeah, there's going to be no more enemies to defeat. Right. 
um, I spoke about, you know, when I interviewed Dave DeCamp for the podcast, my podcast, you know, I, I said it on, off the air, I said, um, you know, I, I, cause I once asked Scott Orton, you know, what would be the more realistic war, China, Russia, and Iran? And he, you know, I said Iran, and that was about three years ago. And I wonder if he changes his mind. I, I don't know, but um, I'm still going to hold true to it. And I, I, I wonder, I, Iran is difficult unless you draw them out of their own country. Yeah, this is this was the Horton argument. This was the Horton. Argument. I agree because when I interviewed Lawrence Wilkerson, he said the same thing, similar to it. Yeah. So what 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 I think is going to happen is. And it, by the way, I'm not a sage, so so it's only a prediction, and um, I think DeSantis wins, and because DeSantis is in, you know, is a high. I think if um, he run, I think if he runs for sure, he wins. I I do. I don't think. I think Trump is kind of thrown in the towel. Um, like if you listen to him recently, it just he just sounds like a blubbering fool, and um. Like, like more so than he did before. It's kind of like he doesn't even care at this moment. Yeah. I think DeSantis has all the momentum and all the passion behind him. And, well, yes, and that's what the- that's what won for Trump in 2016 was passion. Sure. It's not because he was the best candidate. It's because he had all the passion behind him. He was also running against the most unpassionate person in Hillary Clinton. Well, I mean, even it, but even if you look at the um, primaries, like he had seventeen Republicans he had to get through. He had Rand Paul, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, you know, Chris Christie, Jeb Bush. He had to get through all those, and what drove him was the passion. It wasn't. It wasn't because he was the smartest one on the stage, you know. Right. Well, he wasn't. Yeah. Ever. But he had charm. <laughs> Even when Hillary Clinton was on stage, he was still not the smartest one on stage. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, Hillary Clinton is much smarter. Oh, when she's smarter. She's brilliant. Moment. It doesn't mean I like her. I just know right, she's smart. Right. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I just know better than to underestimate that bitch. <laughs> no, don't, because that's why that's how you can end up dead. Yes. Um, but anyway, did anyone know that there was a CIA kill list? Yes. Right after September 11, 2001. Yeah. Actually, the CIA was granted permission to use a rendition in uh, 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 the rendition program along with the kill list. It was actually approved by Bush. Yep. And then Obama put it into action. Put it into effect with the Trump program. And then Trump even went further than that. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that Trump actually authorized the most drone strikes in history. Yep stunning when you think about it yeah. so that's why there is no there is no you know divisional party line here folks now i wonder if that cia kill list exists still I bet it does i wonder Are i'm sure on- they don't i'm sure they don't show it to biden he'd probably say it on say it in an yeah, interview would, or something right because he would actually just say it like because yeah has- can you? I can't believe that they'll throw him out there again. <laughs> what are you doing? The Let him go in a home. You know the rest of the poor guy. Yeah, it, it's all. It's it. It went from I felt bad for the guy at one point, and it was like this is elderly abuse. This is to just abuse. to just finding it completely hilarious. It's like I was just. just all right, can you like, imagine? If we gotta, if I gotta live with this for four years, I'm gonna laugh at it. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, well, well, why wouldn't you, right? I mean, it's, it's better than crime. It's horrible, man. It's I mean, terrible. really, well, he's the oldest president in history, with Donald Trump being the second president, oldest president in history. What is he? I think he's 81, uh, Joe Biden. 81 or 82? Yeah, he's yeah, somewhere I mean, around there. All right, so the the what the primary is in 2024. He's yeah. 80 years old. So his, he'll be 81 this year, Joe Biden. So you're telling me that he'll be 82 years old running for president? Are you out of your mind? Yeah. Democrats, the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> you have a young guy who I think would be a much better av- uh, electee, and Gavin Newsom. You know, he's, he's a freaking or, you know authoritarian, but Gavin Newsom is like, you know, half his age. Yeah. Well, he's a good looking dude. He's charismatic. You know, yeah. it's like 
I, I can disagree with his politics all day long, but at least I can understand why you would like him. I look at Biden and I'm like, I don't know why anybody likes this guy. How I, I don't know how he got 81 million. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> how you know, did he and, and everybody him? wonders why does why do Trump supporters think that Biden stole the election? Have you seen Biden? Like, all you got to do is look at Biden and go, there's no way. No way he got 81 million votes. <laughs> I don't know how he got more votes than Obama. Right. And Obama killed both of his opponents. Yeah. Destroyed the both of them. But he never got anywhere near the votes for Biden. And so right. all this, listen, all this uh, for those out there uh, who are critiquing the January 6th riots. If you're, if you're going to complain about electoral fraud, let me tell you something. The United States does it to every other country on the face of the earth. Mm-hmm. So give me a break about you complaining about. And you know, the U.S. will send in freaking military to overthrow the government that right, they exactly. think is illegitimately elected. You had a guy who was dressed as a ram's horn going into the you know the House of Representatives. Give me a break. <laughs> this is a far cry than having CIA right wing no authoritarians you know conquering a you know a Central American state like Ecuador. Mm. Or, or uh, you know, Honduras. Right. You know, using right-wing militias. Yeah. You know, those guys, those guys didn't even have a damn knife. <laughs> what, they have zip ties? They're going to they're gonna capture Alexander Cortez? What were they going to do with her? I could think of a couple of things to do with her. I, I, you, you would. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm, I'm like, come on, the Oath Keepers. By the way, the FBI had informants inside that group. Like, come, give me a break, really. Right. You called that a, a no overthrow? Right. No, the overthrow would have been, hey, let's go over to the Federal Reserve Building and start overthrowing the people there. Oh, let's go to you know uh, CIA Langley headquarters. <laughs> you know, let's start with the right places. Right. You know. Oh yeah, we put a scare in the Capitol, right? We put a scare. Good. It was it was kind of it was funny watching them duck under chairs. Uh yeah, listen, but that's where you want people in power and want to be that the people can take away the power that we give them. Right. Yeah. All right. Now when the I people actually, when the people feel the go- fear the government, you have tyranny. When the government fears the people, you have liberty. Oh, that's a great quote. Yeah. And that's true. Look, I would rather... I think that was it. Jefferson that said that. Was it? Yeah. I so I so. would rather have it that way because, you look, I even said, wow, I agree with the premise, but I hated the fact that they went on, you know, oh, it oh, was... It was my buddy Bird, I don't know if you've ever heard Timeline Earth, but my buddy Bird, he called it the Reichstag fart. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's I got to use that one. That's a great. That's a great. Uh, I love. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, look, I, you know, like that's it's such a joke. Uh, to call that uh worse than nine eleven itself, and right. of course, you know, the Democrats and the intelligence services will of course inflame. Oh, it was an attack on our democracy. Is it, what do you call the Patriot Act? What yeah. do you call freedom? What do you call the national authorization? But but that's not their democracy. Like you have to understand what they mean by their democracy is the rightful ownership of the power that they are yeah. entitled to. Right. And by they, I mean the Democratic Party. Yeah, sure. Right. See, this is why it's so much easier to get in line with uh more of the Republicans than it is the the Democrats because the Republicans aren't quite as aren't near as an authoritarian right so you'll have like your mitch mcconnell's and your your um your kevin mccarthy's the guys that have been in office forever but most of the republicans don't want authority over your life every single one of the democrats wants you to bow down and allow them to make your child a transgender that's the difference yeah, well, yeah. I, look, um, that whole—that's another issue for another podcast. Well, I'm just, yeah, no, but I'm just saying. Yeah. There's there's this difference in the authoritarian ideals of of both parties, at least at this moment, right? It could have been different in the past. It could be different in the future. At this moment, we're looking at it, and it is a specific thing. 
And the Democrats are authoritarians and much more so than the Republicans are. And so it's much easier to get behind the Republicans and say, you know, what? I'd rather like, like support this dude and see that bitch lose like Blake masters. I'd rather support Blake masters, you know, than anybody on the Democrat side, you know what I'm saying? And so it's, it's just, they make it so easy to hate them. Oh yeah. I have no uh, affiliation with anybody on the left. I know you don't. I'm, I'm just, I'm just making a point no, right, that, right. that it's very much easier to line up with the Republicans at this point in time in history than it is the Democrats because they know, are so out of their fucking mind right now. Right. You know what? It's funny that you bring that up about Blake Masters. Didn't Dave Smith got, catch a little flack for that because he backed Blake's Masters instead of... Uh, yeah, he did. It was stupid. Right. I, I, yeah, I saw that. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, well, well, all right, you know, pick your poison, right? Right. I mean, yeah. Okay. Um, What was it? I, who was the other person? Yeah, I mean, if, you're, if your choice is Blake Masters or Kristen Cinema. Who are you going to choose? Right, Chris, right, right. You know, like I don't. That's not who he was running against. I'm just making a point. Like you got two two politicians from Arizona. You have Kristen Cinema, Blake Masters. Choose one. Make your choice. Oh no, I went the Libertarian. Fuck you, dude. That's not a choice. Your choices are Blake Masters or Kristen Cinema. Make your choice. You know, it's like sometimes you just got to understand that you don't have to like the choices. You have to make a choice, you know? But do, but do you have to make a choice? Well, if you don't want to make a choice, don't make a choice, but you still made a choice. Right. I choose not to choose. You choose not to choose. That's a rush song. Wanna... What's that? That's a rush song. Is it really? You know, I yeah. never was a big fan of Rush. Yeah, he says something along the lines of, uh, even if you don't decide, you still have made a choice. <laughs> That's true, though. Yeah. It's true, <laughs> right? You decided you you made the choice that you're not going to choose right. out of these two, and that you're going to let other people choose for you. So, all right. Well, I well listen. If other people want to choose the destruction of their own country, go right ahead. I won't play. Well, sometimes you just got to choose what speed it goes in. <laughs> well, you know, George Collin had a great a bit about that about people, you know, the non-voters. Yeah. Oh, if you don't vote, then you know you're the problem. Well, no. You're the ones who voted for the people. Yeah, you can't blame me. I didn't do it. <laughs> that's, that's what he got. I love that argument. I love it. The defense yeah. I mean, sometimes it's, but that, like I said, sometimes you're just choosing what speed you're going in the destruction. It's like, how fast do you want to see it destroyed? Because you're still going in the same direction. Well, yeah. I mean, if we're, if we're talking about religious fanatics, well, then, I mean, uh, let's, you know, Vote for John Hagee, for God's sakes. He just wants the end of the world. I'd say vote for John Christostom. Who is, I heard this name before. He was, he was a saint. He's a saint. Christostom? Yeah, Christostom. Yeah. Wrote several books. Uh, he organized, he, he wrote out the, the liturgy that's used in Orthodox Christianity. Mm. Yeah. So. Really? Yeah. Back in like 400 AD. Good Lord, really? Yeah. So. <laughs> that's too long ago there. Uh, <laughs> well, that's why I, I said vote for that guy. The last thing he's going to do is screw shit up. <laughs> right, exactly. You know, you ever wonder what people were like back then? And they, they could see right now, they probably want us to end it all. They might. Sometimes I want us to end it all. <laughs> You're, well, you're like you. You just want to see the world burn, like to. No, to, I don't want to just see the world burn. I just want to see want my to kids see. succeed. That's yeah, it. You, well, you got kids, right? You well, you yeah. want you want. That's why you do what you do. So. Yeah, yeah. I have five kids. I have five kids, kids and a granddaughter. So yeah. Oh, so there you go. All right. Yeah. So you're fighting the good fight, Tom. Yeah, trying to. That's why you have the show. Yeah, I get. Yeah, sure. <laughs> well, I, look, I told it's you not that. it's not my ego no well, God's sake, you're not, are you making a dime off this <laughs> sake, you, know, you, know, you know i said the same thing to kyle too you know i you know he's not doing it for the money you know but he's trying to reach an audience that you know hey listen you know we got to pay attention to problems that are you know prescient to the right to humanity. yeah 
I mean, yeah. I make a little bit of money off of it, but I don't make a whole lot. But I've oh been doing God. it for a while too. You're, you're I, not Andrew Tate. No, I'm not. No, <laughs> no, I'm not. Not nowhere close. I still yeah, drive no a truck way, every right? day. So God's sakes. Yeah, oh, I still man. drive truck every day. I don't make enough money to not do anything else. It's just yeah, I make a little bit of money, but it's not. It's not anything writing. I'm not writing home about it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, that's right. You know, that's nothing about the Libertarian Institute, members of the Libertarian Institute. They're all like blue collar, every single one of them. Bullshit. Patrick McFarlane's a fucking attorney. <laughs> in a small town in Colorado or wherever he's from, right? <laughs> he's up north, yeah. Yeah. Well, he's not like a big league. He's not like, you know, the devil. Yeah, guy. he is. He started his own firm, has his own podcast. Real, real scummy guy. <laughs> he's barely getting along the poor guy come on <laughs> i love patrick <laughs> oh he's great he's fantastic i love, I love that. but hey man i need to call it quits i haven't eaten I yet i'm, I'm getting hungry yeah we are I, I we're, supposed chat with talk, you. we're supposed to be talking about depressing subjects tommy yeah i know but it's a good thing we started off with the depressing subjects and now everybody can laugh and say oh these guys really do like each other that's right <laughs> hey, we, hey we are human beings not androids you know yeah right yeah yeah sometimes you just get to a point where you're like all right i'm tired of talking about that shit like I'm let's, sick. Talk, no, let's I, just I talk right. yeah. Yeah. yeah it's true but yeah i'm gonna go eat i haven't eaten yet so i'm gonna right, go well. eat and get some rest do that it is hey listen it was a, i love this recording by the way it was great this was fun, brother. And yeah, we'll, we're going to, we're going to, I'm going to get back in touch with you. We're going to do some more on nine 11. I just, uh, we're going to have to chat and figure out which direction we want to go from here. Well, you know, wherever you want to go to it, Tommy, uh, I'm all for it. So yeah, well, I got to get with you to find out what's left. Sure. Well, we're, <laughs> we're, we're, this is the ninth episode, right? Yeah. This is the ninth ep episode and we've done the dancing Israelis, Saudi Arabia, all kinds of stuff. Yeah, we did because so. uh, I have the all downloaded and uh, mm -hmm. you know, we covered a lot. Um, yeah, but yeah, wherever you want to go with it, Tommy, I'm I'm with you. So sounds good, I'm, man. You're a pleasure to work with. Awesome, man. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're gonna do some more episodes. We're gonna. This has been fun, and I don't want to stop yet. I I think there's a lot more to go. Yeah, there is. But um, yeah, of course, I'll always work with you. You're a great. You're a great conversationalist, brother. All right, bro. Love you. Well, you have a good night, man. All right, Tommy. I'll see you this week or something. All right, buddy. Take care, brother.